HTML5 promises to bring a ton of new features into the browsers in the coming years, but no feature is as highly anticipated as the HTML5 video tag. Since the web was born, there's been no native way of embedding videos into our web page, so we've had to resort to plugins like Flash and QuickTime to get movies into our site. The HTML5 video tag promises to make it as easy to embed a video into a web page as it is to embed an image. Not only does the video tag make it easier to embed a video onto the page, but since it's a first-class citizen in the document, you can interact with and manipulate the video on the page in ways that are extremely difficult to do in Flash. This includes things like image recognition, video manipulation, and interactive elements within the video itself. The good news is some browsers today have support for the video tag, and pretty much all others plan to release support soon. Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Safari, Mobile Safari, and most WebKit-based mobile browsers support HTML5 video to some degree. Internet Explorer promises to deliver support for HTML5 video in version 9, which we should be seeing in 2011. Before we can put videos onto our page, we must first convert them into a format that the browser understands. Just like the image tag should be in a common format like JPEG, PNG, or GIF, there are a limited set of video formats that the browser can understand. Unfortunately, right now, there is no single format that works across all browsers. The two major formats that are being supported now are H.264 and Theora. H.264 is a well-established, high-quality format with widespread adoption, including devices with H.264 decoding hardware. H.264 is, however, protected by several patents, and while it's free for use on the web now, that may not always be the case in the future. H.264 is supported by Safari, Mobile Safari, Chrome, and Internet Explorer version 9. Now, Firefox currently does not support H.264, due in large part to it not being an open standard. Aug Theora has less market share, but claims to be free of any patents, and therefore an open standard which would remain free forever. Currently, only Firefox and Chrome support Aug Theora, while Safari and Internet Explorer do not. So, in order to let everyone view our video, we must encode our video twice, once in H.264 and once in Aug Theora. Of course, we could choose one format or the other and exclude certain browsers, but in our cases, we want to encode in both. At the time of this video's production, Google has just announced yet another contender in the web video arena. WebM. It aims at being both a high-quality codec as well as completely open and free to use on the web. Right now there's not much support for WebM, but there are huge efforts to begin building compatibility into browsers and video authoring software. To encode our video into Aug Theora, I recommend a Firefox plugin called Firefog. You can go to firefog.org and install the plugin. Now once you have it installed, you go back to firefog.org and you can click Make Aug Video. Now when this page opens, you're going to click Select File, and you're going to grab your video, and click Open. It's going to open up some configurations for you, so you can mess with some defaults right here. I'm actually going to do something a little more customized, so I'm going to change the basic quality and resolution. I want my video width to be actually 640 wide. For my case, that makes the most sense. Now you can edit a lot of different stuff on the video here, but that's all optional. Once you have all the settings that you want, you can quickly just say save aug and give it a file name. So I'm going to call it foa.aug and let it do its thing. For encoding H.264 video, I prefer to use a tool called Handbrake. You can get it at handbrake.fr and download it. It should be available in whatever operating system you're using. Now once we have it downloaded and installed, we're going to open it up. And first it's going to ask you for the source video. So we're going to select our video, and once it analyzes it, we want to pick the we want to pick the iPhone and iPod Touch version, and that'll get us closest to our final and that'll get us closest to our final settings. We want to click Web Optimized, and all these other settings should be fine. Now you can edit the resolution of it by going to Picture Settings, which will open up this little thing right here. And I want to make it 640 wide. So it's not a very elegant interface for doing this. So we'll just click it. And now we're at 640 wide by 368, just like our other resolution. And we can close this out. And now, once we have all of our settings selected, we are going to put Start and let it do its thing. Once this is done, we're going to move both of our all once this is done, we're going to move our AUG file and our H.264 MP4 file into a video folder in our web directory for use in our web page. 
Now once we have our video encoded and available to our web page, we can actually add it into our HTML. So we start by using a video tag. So we'll click video, and we'll also have a closing tag, so video. Now if we decided to only support one codec, this would be pretty easy. All we need to put in is the source attribute, just like an image tag, and our videos are at videos slash foa dot logv. Now in addition to the source, we want to add a height and a width. And in our case, and in our case, our video was 640 wide by 368. And then finally, inside the video tag, we would want to add the controls attribute. Now this doesn't have to have a value. Its mere presence in the tag indicates to the browser that it should render the native playback controls and volume controls. Now for using multiple encodings, we remove the source tag from our video tag, and we're going to put some stuff inside of our video tag. For each encoding, we're going to add a source tag, and each, and each source tag will have an SRC, or source attribute, so we're going to have one for video slash foa dot og. And we can have another source here for our H.264. So it's video slash foa dot mp4. Now when we have multiple types, it's important to add a type attribute to each one of our sources. In the case of our og formats, it's going to look a little bit like this. And for our H.264, it's going to look like this. Now what these type attributes do is tell the browser what codecs these particular sources require to play. That way the browser can try to determine if it can play the video before having to download it. If we omitted these type attributes, the browser would try to download each one of our encodings to see if it could play it, which would waste a lot of bandwidth. For AUG, it's pretty simple. We just put video slash AUG semicolon codex equals and then quotes Theora comma Vorbis. Now the H.264 MP4 is a little more involved. We have video slash MP4. And then our codecs are AVC 1.42E01E and MP4A.40.2. Now depending on your encoding settings, these might be different, so you want to consult with the software that you had rendering your video. But if you use the settings that we did, these should be the correct values. So if we save it out, we load up our page, Looks like we forgot the equal sign here, so we'll just put that in. And so now that we have this all written out, we can check our actual HTML page. So we'll flip over, check it, and we can see our video playing right inside the page. We can scrub around, and you can see that the browser rendered our playback controls for us. Now we've seen how to embed a simple video into our web page. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to use the JavaScript API to manipulate the video programmatically.